And you know, when I'm doing this, when I see something like this, probably, you know, I'm analyzing this. Most likely, I end up with something that looks like this. If you know, kind of this is the natural nonlinearity in the system. But if I see something like this, um, you know, most of this is very simple linear stuff. So this is most likely the actual the controller, right? So this would be like a PD control, like a proportional gain times the position error, a velocity gain times the velocity error. So if I see something like that, probably I'm thinking in terms of like, it's probably like a controller. Right? Um, so I'm really I'm probably analyzing the stability of a controller when I do this. Let's do k1 equals 1 and k2 equals 1. Just put some numbers in. See how I would do this. So I'm going to separate it into like a linear part and a nonlinear part. So I have a linear part and a nonlinear part. So I have x1, x dot equals 0, 1, negative 1, negative 1 times x plus 0, 1 times x squared, x2 squared. So this is my linear, this is my nonlinear. So I get x dot equals ax plus bh of x. h of x equals x2 squared. So I have, again, I'm just going to use this quadratic form for my v. So x transpose px. And now uh, p is not uh, mysterious anymore. We know exactly a way to calculate p. So we can stick numbers in there that Laplace equation, so we now have to calculate p now. So before when I was throwing this up, I was just like saying, trust me, these numbers work, but now you know how to calculate them yourselves. So you can easily come up with a p matrix now and put in there that will work. So v dot is equal to x dot transpose px plus x transpose p x dot equals h v transpose plus x transpose a transpose p x plus x transpose p a x plus b h equals x negative x transpose a transpose p plus p a x plus x transpose p b h plus h E transpose px. So I get E dot equals negative x transpose qx plus 2 x transpose pbh. So now I have a nice little formula. So, um, so basically I derived the formula. So from now on I'll just, whenever I need the formula, I'll just write the formula. Just assume this kind of memorized thing. So I have B dot is less than or equal to negative minimum eigenvalue of Q times the norm of X squared plus 2 times the norm of X times the maximum eigenvalue of p times the magnitude of h. So how can I go from here to here? Well, that's the stuff you're studying in the appendix. So by the time you write the quiz, it'll be obvious why this is true. Okay? So that's the kind of stuff you're studying for when you do the quiz. So 
h in this case is x2 squared. The magnitude of h is x2 squared. Since q is just the identity matrix, the minimum eigenvalue of q is equal to 1. So I really have v dot less than or equal to minus the norm of x times the norm of x minus 2, maximum eigenvalue of p times x2 squared. So what I'm interested in is I'm interested where is v dot less than 0? So if v dot is less than 0, v cannot increase. So that's kind of my region of stability. So v dot is less than 0 when norm of x minus 2 times maximum eigenvalue of p times x2 squared is greater than 0. Square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared is greater than 2. And the max p times x2 squared. So dot dot dot, what I eventually end up with is that the magnitude of x2 has to be is less than 1 over 2 times the maximum eigenvalue of p. So v dot is less than zero as long as x2 is small enough, basically. So lambda max, maximum eigenvalue of p is 1.809, actually. So I have x2 less than 0 0.276. So D I could write like this formally. Because that was my basic question. I don't know if you remember, but that's what I was starting off with was the question of what is D? What is capital D? region where v dot is less than zero. But we're not quite to the point where, we, where, we, where we've defined what, what we're going to call this region of attractions, where it's actually stable. So we have this larger region where v dot is less than zero. But there's going to be some smaller region than that where it turns out that we're going to have this local stability result. So this is the way it always works. Like v dot is less than zero over some big region which implies there's some smaller region where we actually have stability, this local stability. We're going to call that a region of attraction, which I'm not going to quite have time to get to today. So we'll, we'll talk about how to calculate that smaller region where you actually have the stability going on. Wait. So let me just show you uh, in MATLAB here how these lab and off surfaces work so we can have some visualization of what I was drawing up on the board before. Um, 
So this code is all up on D2L. You can take a look at it. Uh, remember, I'm not actually running this like a program. I'm just like copying and pasting chunks of this program into the MATLAB command window. So it might be a little confusing if you open up this code and just try to press run at the top of the file. It's not exactly how it's intended to be done. So I'm just copying and pasting. So let's see what I'm doing here exactly. So let's, let's take a look at the code first. So I'm setting this up with K1 and K2, um, just like I did in the example in class. K1 is one, K2 is one. So that's exactly what I just wrote on the board. Um, using this uh, Lapinoff equation solver to solve my matrix P. So nobody's ever going to ask you to do it on a final exam or anything. So just when you see the Lapinoff equation, you know, it's just one line of lab, MATLAB code, so it's not like a hard thing. Although if you're programming it in C, maybe it'll be a bit tricky, but I'm sure there's a numerical recipe somewhere that you can look up to do it in C. Um, if you can, MATLAB makes it easy to find maximum and minimum eigenvalues. Um, here's my constant for the ellipse. So you've given me um, a challenge of meeting an epsilon, so here is here I'm assuming you want epsilon to be one, but in reality you're trying to pick epsilon to be as small as possible. And I'm trying to meet that challenge that you're giving me. Um, so the equation for calculating the ellipse is just that d equals epsilon squared plus p min. So I'm just solving that equation for d. So that gives me a, a lap enough surface, basically. Um, so I calculate a small circle. So the small circle that fits inside that ellipse is that uh, is, is the radius delta. So the, my initial condition is within the small circle. Radius delta I should stay within your bigger circle of radius epsilon. And then I can just draw the thing out. So it looks like this. Um, so like I said, if you use a different, so I'm using Q to be the identity matrix. If you picked a different Q, you would get a different ellipse here. But some people, so some analysis shows that picking Q to be the identity matrix is actually kind of the ideal solution in some ways. So we'll just stick with that in this course. Um, so as long as I, as long as my initial condition is in here, then I should stay within your ball of radius epsilon under the condition that I've shown B dot is less than zero, right? As long as I could, as long as I've shown B dot is less than zero, that'll work. So let's let's kind of visualize this in three dimensions. So when we do V of X, V of X is like a bowl shape, okay? So each value, each constant value of V is an ellipse going around the bowl. So it's basically like the saddle dome. So when you drew your circle of radius epsilon, although from looking at it from the top, it looks like a circle. When I look from it at the side, it looks like the roof of the saddle dome. It's going up and down this um, bowl shape, right? Uh, but when I chose my ellipse, my ellipse is actually a level set in this pool. So the ellipse always looks like an ellipse from whatever angle. Because the ellipse that I've chosen is kind of one row of seats in the saddle dome that goes around the saddle dome. But if I was in the saddle dome and I drew a circle, obviously it'd be going up and down the seats, right? So my smaller circle of radius delta, same thing. It kind of goes up and down these rows of seats in the saddle dome. Uh, so the idea here is that, you know, the, the information about what V dot is, is not conveyed in this diagram whatsoever. So I have no idea. So I have to go off and do some calculations. So I go and calculate what V dot is. So assuming I can prove V dot is less than zero, that means I can't go up rows in the saddle dome. So if I'm at one row in the saddle dome, of seats in the saddle dome, I've proven that V dot is less than zero, so I can't go uphill. So I can't go to this row of seats, it's impossible. I can only go down rows of seats. So that therefore, if I start within this circle of radius delta, you know, the highest I could start would be here. Or, or sorry, 
the uh, lowest I could start would be here. Um, now, as long as I'm going downhill, I can't go outside of this lip. So, in other words, I can't go above this row of seats, and therefore, I can't go beyond your circle of radius of epsilon. Okay. So that's basically, and these quadratic forms, these bowl shapes, are all I'm going to use in this course. I'm not going to use anything more complicated for V. In the literature, there are some people out there who use more complicated Lapina functions that aren't quadratic functions that don't have elliptical level sets, but I won't do anything like that in this course. This course will always be able to think of V as being a bowl that's made up of elliptical level sets. So we can always use this visualization throughout the rest of the course for everything we do. And that keeps things nice and simple, nice simple way to design controllers. So like I said, it looks like a circle, circles when you look at it on top, but only the ellipse stays level when you look at it from the side. Right? Any questions about this? Does that kind of make sense? So this is really straightforward. If, if v dot is less than zero everywhere, then it's really straightforward. So it's exactly what I just said. Everything's really simple. So the, what we have to deal with um, in some special cases, like in the next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to look at when v dot is less than zero in some region, but not less than zero other places. And then it gets a little trickier. So sometimes you get v dot being less than zero out here, but not inside. And then sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes you have v dot less than zero in here, but not out here. So it can be like two totally different things. But usually, if v dot is less than zero somewhere, you're usually OK. You can design some kind of controller. But um, it's, it's only in the case where v dot is not less than zero anywhere that <laughs> your controller isn't working. OK? Um, so any questions at all before we break? I don't, think, I don't think that the lectures will be as long from here on. So I don't, I don't think we're going to do the full three hour lecture from now on. So I think we've got, we needed to kind of cram lots of information into the first <laughs> couple of lectures, but I, I don't think we'll go as long from, from here on. Okay. All right, so um, you, you can start thinking about your, I, I think I said you were supposed to talk to me about your project before September 25th, but um, uh, I think I'll, I'll give that another week because I was originally planning to lecture on robot dynamics next week, but I'm going to leave it for another week. So next week, I'm going to continue on with this Lapinoff theory. And then the following week, so I guess October 2nd, is when we'll get into the robot dynamics. And that's when we can have more discussion of what exactly your projects will look like. Okay. So don't worry, don't worry about your projects too much for maybe a couple of weeks before you really have to talk to me about what you want to tackle in your projects. Because maybe you want to see the dynamics of the robot first before we think about that too much. Okay, so we'll see you next week.